Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Brought to you by So Sam, uh, welcome, and why don't you, by way of introduction, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do for Microsoft. I'm Sam Guckenheimer. I'm the group product planner for Visual Studio Team System. I'm the guy who worries about the whole of the product being greater than the sum of each of its parts. You can so think of me as... Kind the, of stitching everything together kind of thing? Exactly. You can think of me as the chief customer or advocate. Okay. You know, the, uh, the history of the space we're in, which is usually called application lifecycle management is a history of these best of breed islands that have uh, done little things, optimized a particular activity or another, but haven't really delivered a flow of value across the, the whole development process. So by these things we're talking about like source code tools and testing tools or is it more broad than that? <clears throat> well exactly, so so part of it is the is the, the team platform, source code control, work item tracking, or simply bug tracking, uh, reporting, project management, uh, architecture requirements, uh, development tools such as profiling, unit testing, code coverage, testing tools, onto deployment. That's the, mm -hmm. the space they usually call ALM. Okay. And the intent of team system is to sort of gather this into one monolithic product, one, I mean, how exactly are you sort of wrapping this end-to-end -end story up? The intent of team system is to let development teams broadly construe the whole lifecycle team, mm -hmm. uh, collaborate better so that they can deliver better software more agilely. We think of ourselves as, as empowering teams to deliver great software. Okay. And the idea is that, you know, Microsoft did a great job making individual developers more productive, and th that's where Visual Studio came about. And over okay. the last decade, that's become the most popular IDE. What we do with Team System is we extend that to the team because software is no longer something usually that one person can create in isolation in a garage. Mm -hmm. There are lots of people involved. As you, you use modern technologies, it gets more complex. Typically, you have customer-facing requirements. You have architecture to think about. You have uh, uh, reuse to think about. You have testing okay. to consider. And all that stuff needs to, needs to support a, a continuous flow instead of having little islands of activity where, mm -hmm. you know, between the islands there are moats or brick walls or... You or know, Chinese walls. Or Chinese case, walls, or channels to swim across, or... or Oceans in some yeah, companies. Yeah, pick, pick, pick your <laughs> metaphor, exactly. Um, now, there are certainly going to be a set of developers out there who <clears throat> look at Team System and say, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm getting micromanaged enough as it is. I don't want something that's tracking my every, my every move, my every step of the way. It's hard enough for me to get anything done because... I have meetings every day, you know, keep your micromanaging tool away from me. I, I, I know based on our conversations that that's not really the intent of the product, but how do you address that particular concern? What do you say to well, the, those developers? Team System's a great way to get the micromanager out of your face. Okay. okay. The, I mean, the, the problem right now is that people typically do live in a world where there is some kind of accountability. Mm -hmm. And if you're a publicly traded company, you're doing a project for one, you have to worry about SOCs, you have to worry about auditability and what have you. And the classic approach to that, the pointy-haired approach, is to ask people to spend two hours a day filling out forms. Right. The idea in team system is you get those two hours a day back because all of that data collection is automatic. All of the reporting surfaces automatically on a portal. So transparently, you can see what's going on, and it helps the individual as much as it helps the project manager. So you say that all of this is kind of automated. Um, 
in terms of, you know, very, very concretely speaking, in terms of my daily life as a developer, I get to the office at, say, 8 a.m., or in my case, probably more like 11 a.m., and I sit down and start my day. So I've logged in, and then what in a VSTS-enabled environment? Well, typically today you'll start looking at Visual Studio, right? Okay. So with Team System, you look at Visual Studio, and you have a list of my active work items. And okay. if new bugs have been assigned to you, they pop up there. If someone else is handing off work to you, say for a code review, it pops up there. If someone else wants your help on something, it pops up there. So you always have a current list of your active work. Okay. Then you code. When you code and it's time to check it in, okay, instead of having to fill out some form saying what you did, you get along with the files that are changed and the mm -hmm. tests that you've done for those files, you get a set of boxes to check with the work items that you that define what you did in that code. So instead okay. of having to go off to another system to record what you did, you simply tick a box on check-in. Mm -hmm. Now the beauty of that is that later that day, or if it's at the end of the day, the next morning, when the build comes out, there's an automated build report. Mm -hmm. It shows what change sets went in, which ones came from you, which ones came from whoever else. Right. It shows you what happened with the build verification tests. And my favorite part is that it creates this automated release note out of the work items that were checked in. And at the same time, for the project manager, it's creating that audit trail so that you don't have to go out and fill in these forms that no one cares about. Mm -hmm. The testers don't have to bug you the next day saying, hey, uh, what, what's ready for test now? What can we do? Because it's all on that build report page. Okay. And then trends are captured in the warehouse, the, the metrics warehouse with TFS, which uses business intelligence style reporting. So you can look at things like quality indicators over time. You can look at rates of progress over time. You can look at the flow of value over time to the customer. So those are all kind of the reports that I feed to the pointy-haired boss to basically say, look, we're doing better, you should pay us more, or look, we're doing worse, you know, pay us more, we'll only get worse from there. Yeah, and exactly. It's either I mean, a reward or a blackmail <coughs> system. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the innovations in team system is that you have these reports that give you early warnings mm -hmm. of symptoms of anti-patterns in the project. So you can see immediately if you're underestimating. You can see immediately if a solution's stuck in testing. You can mm -hmm. see immediately if there's a problem with reactivations, that is uh, uh, features and bugs getting reported done before they really are and having to be reopened. Okay. You can see all this stuff and you don't need to go around with a clipboard and interrogate everyone to get the information. It just comes out of that. And mm -hmm. the effect of that <clears throat> is that you then, as, as the developer, the project manager, can communicate with your senior vice president mm -hmm. by carrying the reports over every two weeks or pointing them to the website and walking through it together. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so you hear, we hear from customers like um, uh, Turner Broadcasting um, is developing the system that will run all of the Turner channels using okay. Team System. Okay. okay. Many, many, many million dollar project. Sure. Okay. Chief Architect was in last week talking to us about how he uses this to keep his SVPs happy and he uses this to report status. He simply. SVPs? Oh, senior vice senior presidents. Senior vice presidents, okay. right? So in the past, you know, it was all these project managers with clipboards. Mm -hmm. Now it's a report you run or a handful of them, right. that he uses in this regular operations view. They feel they have visibility into the project. The team feels like all the overhead's off their backs. Right. And the transparency creates a feeling of trust and a willingness to not get into these tangled budget discussions, but a willingness to let the team move forward because you can see real progress in real time. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.